Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily chat. Um, today we're going to talk about weaponizing your history. That's going to sound a bit crazy, isn't it? But I'll explain in a moment. Before I do that, let me introduce myself and I'll give you more information about what I'm about and then we go from there. Um, first of all, hi, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. Um, I am a best-selling author of the book 50 Ways to Love Your Lover um, for singles and couples, men and women, good book on relationships. I recommend it and I'm very biased. I'm also an inspirational speaker and relationship and love expert helping women create balance in love, life and business. I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is what informs my work with women and also what inspired these talks over two years ago, hence the high numbers, um, called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So today we're episode number 793 and again the topic today is have you weaponized your history? What is that and how do you fix it? How do you change that? Because the thing is some people, when they go, what do you mean by weaponizing history? It sounds scary. Well, it, it's intended to be that way. Um, first of all, that term came out in a conversation with a client this morning, and it knocked her sideways. I mean, she was like going, whoa, because it hit her so hard as the truth is that she'd been using the, basically, to explain what I mean by weaponizing history is, she was using, using a history against herself. And in fact, she was using a history to mess up her future as well as her present. And you may be doing the same thing without even realizing it. So I should give you some indicators, some clues, some hints as to what that might look like so you know if you're actually doing it or not. Because not everybody does this, but a lot of people do. Because for most people, the history is largely hidden. As in, it's not present and aware, it's just stuck in the back somewhere. Like in the trunk where you don't think about stuff. And if you have a car with a trunk on it, it's quite likely the things in there you forgot you even had in there. You know what I mean? This is kind of the same thing with your history. It's behind you and it's forgotten, but it's still there. And in some cases, it can be very challenging. So using the car analogy again, because I didn't realize I got to play with this a bit. One way of looking at the weaponizing your history is as if you put a firecracker in the trunk of your car and keep driving. Not a pretty sight when it goes off. Is that an, yeah, I guess that analogy kind of works. Why don't you, it's, mm, mm. No, here's another, actually, for most people, let me put it this way. If you're driving a car along and you have four paving slabs in the trunk, you're still going to be going along, but you're going to be slowly being dragged slower and slower by what's behind you in the trunk. What's in there that's basically making your car perform less well to have much, better, much, much worse fuel economy, I did the wrong way around for a second, and also it takes you a lot longer to get where you're going. That's the general effect that having your history weaponized is doing to you in your life. Not as dramatic as being like, you know, shotguns going off or, or firecrackers in the trunk. These analogies get weird. But it's more about how your history is getting in the way and slowing you down and making life more challenging. Because if you've got four paving slabs in the trunk of your car when you're driving along, it's going to slow you down. What that what looks like in real life, not just analogy, is, is that when, you, when your history is weaponized, let me back another way. What I mean by history, let me be clear with that, is obviously everything in the past, but it's more than that. Your history I'm speaking about primarily is things where there is emotional charge. Kind of like time bombs. Look explosive. To, okay, I apologize for my explosive analogies lately, but that's what's coming up in my conversation, so that's what it is. Maybe it's the weaponizing term. But basically those things in your past history that were painful, uh, upsetting, emotionally distressing, as well as things that sometimes happen more subtly. Things that happened when you were younger, particularly in your childhood, that were imprinted upon you by those loving people around you called your parents. You learnt things when you were at their knee, you know, your father's knee sort of thing, that may or may not be actually accurate and may in fact be influencing your life now in ways that you don't want. That's a challenge for people in general. I mean, I went through it myself and I've shared many times in my broadcasts and on summits and other, even in my book, which I mentioned already, how my upbringing affected my dating life. And since I'm talking about love and relationships, because that's my theme, the influence of your parents' programming, the wiring they installed, the beliefs they gave you, the ways they expressed love to each other or didn't express love to each other that you took on as being the way life must be and the way love must be expressed are the things you took on as an, the, the, way, are the things you put on as a kid 
that become the slab, the, the paving slabs in the trunk of your car. They're the weights that you carry into adult life. And when you use them, excuse me, when they use you, let me qualify it that way. For example, let me back up a second and, and say another way. For, for example, as a kid, perhaps you were raised in a family where yelling and abuse were part of the equation of your family's dynamic. As children, we are looking to the big people around us, again, those adults, for, for the way that love should be expressed, because that's the way we think it should be done. So as a child, you're living your life and being happy-go-lucky and just enjoying life, but your parents are showing you what may be a painful picture tied to love. Abuse, upset, hurt feelings, anger, yelling, stuff like that. Fast forward, fast, try again with my teeth in. Fast forward to your adult life, and in your adult dating life, you might find you experience your relationships where the way you express love or the way you expect love to be expressed to work both ways comes from a place of pain, of yelling, of abuse, of other forms of upset. That's the weaponizing experience. As I said before, there are parts of your upbringing, your life, and your um, personality that are formed through what you learn as a child that you express in your adult life that may be taking you off track. So it may not be that dramatic and being weaponized is the term I use, because I wanted to obviously get attention, but they're gonna cause you to be off track of what you really want. You may be thinking up here in your adult conscious present life experience, you wanna have a relationship that's gonna fulfill all your destinies, your dreams and everything else. Meanwhile, your subconscious, well it's not really down here, but it's in the back here, your midbrain basically, for those who want to be technical, kinda, is running a different story. It's running tapes, beliefs, tape, you even tapes, yeah, back in the 90s. Um, it's running, <laughs> running recordings of history that you took on as a child that you're still running as an adult. Using that car analogy I said earlier, so imagine you've got four paving slabs in the trunk of your car, and then you give the keys to the car to your five-year-old. Not a good combination. So th these analogies are working out weird, so bear with me on that. But the point I want to make clearly, and I hope you get this point, is that your history without having any influence, sorry, your, if you don't have any influence over your history or conscious awareness to change it, it's gonna run your life ragged, particularly in, area, particularly in the area of love and relationships. Your wiring, your experience as a child, and keep using the word wiring, it's like that, you, it's like, in a way the way, you, the way your brain is developed, the way you grow up as a child, and this is Bruce Lipton in the Biology of Belief, explains this really clearly if you wanna read about it in a more technical format, our brain is still formulating how things are and we start wiring in the way life is from our experiences. We don't come in with a user manual. We don't come in with a, an install, installation program. We learn as we go. And so what happens around us from our parents, from the adults around us, from siblings even, and various aunts and uncles, relatives, their influence on us goes straight in. Because as a four or five year old, we don't know any different. And we don't necessarily have the decision-making tools to say, no, that's not true. And this is the thing. By not having that discernment in place, that gatekeeper of beliefs coming into us, we take it all on thinking that's the way it is. And because as young kids, love is our primary motivation, for most kids it is, then we tie everything to it because that's the way we experience everyone interacting with us. And then you fast forward through 20 years of life, experience, school, college, etc. And that's now becoming a subconscious program that's running in the background. It is autopilot, it is weaponized, and it can go off at any time, particularly in relationships. Because in relationships, as I mentioned, you find yourself expressing that to your partner because what's happening is, one, the walls are coming down. You're becoming more vulnerable, at least I hope you are in relationship. And what tends to happen is you're more suppressed, more deeper feelings will come up to be expressed and the deeper feelings are the more historical ones. So your history that is in there of what's tied love to whatever it is it's tied to will tend to express itself more vulnerably, more easily, and more painfully, if it's not healthy, in your relationships. It won't generally happen at your office. It won't generally happen in your friendships, generally. But it tends to happen in romantic relationships because that's where the most intimate and vulnerable places happen. It seems backwards, but it's strange how basically your weaponized history will actually hurt the person you're closest to, because that's the one that gets in closest to your energy, your energy and your, and your history. 
So my guidance here, first was become aware. Okay, so I said, how do we aware of what to do about it? So let me, let me give those two pieces. I missed those two pieces. So firstly, now if you understand what I'm talking about, I trust. Firstly, focusing on your recent history in relationships, particularly as your primary guidance to seeing what is it I'm doing in relationship? Or I should say, what is it I'm not liking about how I am in relationship? What is it I'm not liking about the partners I choose in a relationship? Those sort of questions, though they're negative, actually tend to unearth things. Let, let, me, let me preface that first, so I want that thought. If you're not liking the way your relationships are going, then this is the piece I'm talking about. If you're having challenges where you're in relationships that are painful, upsetting, wounding, abusive, et cetera, et cetera, looking at your own experience and looking at the threads where it starts in your present relationship and you start looking backwards in time, if we start to unearth where your wiring comes from. You may have an immediate go when you look at your last relationship and just go, oh, I now know and go straight back to your first experience with your parents or show up from your history. That's possible, but generally speaking, it's better to, you'll tend to be an unearthing or an un a revealing process as you go through deeper and deeper and deeper in your history. My experience was it took three relationships to get, three relationships to get the clue what was going on. It may take you more, it may take you less. But when you start to realize the common threads, because you're the common denominator in every relationship, when you understand where you are the instigator, protagonist perhaps, but certainly the unconscious um, creator of those experiences, when you understand that, then you can dismantle it. It's like basically, dis since I'm using those analogies, is, is um, diffusing a bomb. That's really dramatic, I know. Probably shouldn't use that analogy. Hmm. Okay, let me back up a second. So if you go back in your history, so again, to find out what it is that you're doing now, because you're doing it not by intention, but most likely by default. And this is one of the keys, by the way. If how you are in a relationship, you're noticing the certain things you do, say, act like, respond to, perform behaviorally, that you're not aware you're doing until it's too late, that's a clue because those are the behaviors that generally are coming out whether you're thinking about it, because that's the autopilot that got wired in when you were five years old. I hope you're seeing the logic and seeing the path here. So having clarity and going back to your past relationships and your past relationships and your past relationships and seeing what was the common thread that you participated in or that you brought or the type of partner you attracted even will give you clues as to where, what this is about, as in what it is that you're running as a program that isn't working for you. That's the how to find how to how to tell what it is. Now how to fix it, how to resolve it, how to change it. This is the deeper dive work. So I'm going to give you the over the the, the uh, broad strokes. But frankly, to do this, you really need to get some, to see someone who knows what they're talking about. As a coach, counselor, guide, therapist, something like that. I have my own recommendations, so I'll tell you about that in a moment. When you go back to your childhood, and you can do this with clarity, with safety, and with intention to unearth and to reveal to yourself what happened when you were a child. Because for some people, that childhood experience is buried deep and almost invisible. Like it's not even aware because it was so painful. For most of us, it wasn't that painful, but it was certainly disruptive in some way, shape or form. Because our parents, like ourselves, weren't brought, we didn't come in with user manuals. So they did the best they could with what they knew how. I've shared before how I believe, I, I've said that I believe sometimes dysfunctional behavior is a her hereditarily shared pattern behaviorally, not genetically. Meaning that the patterns that we take on from our parents, they took on perhaps one of them or both of them from their parents and their parents before them because they learned the same behavior when they were a child and it, it follows on. So you might be finding yourself being at the end of a line of a family dynamic that goes back generations. So if you, if you resolve this, if you heal it, if you transform it, it won't continue on, which means if you have children or you're going to have children, you won't visit that on them either. That's the gift that can help out massively. So this is important to know and to become aware of. So when you do that, you can change your history and then change your future as well and change the future of those who come, who come after you. So it's important to take this on. So again, go back in time, watch your past relationships, follow the threads back to what happened when you were a child. You'll see some resonance, some, du um, uh, not duplication, some um, familiarity where the same thing's happening back then as they do now. When you go back that far, you can then start doing the work, which is to really realign your beliefs, to change the wiring inside and to, in a simple way, have an incredibly intimate, deep conversation with your inner five-year-old. 
where you and your five-year-old can come to a new understanding because that's all it really takes. It's not always easy. Sorry, it's, it's easy, but not always simple. Or simple, no, it's simple. Switch around. It's simple, but not always easy. Let me get clear about that. So my invitation to you is to find a way to do that. Either If you've got the skills yourself, go, go for it, but most people don't. One reason in my coaching, I tend to work on that part as a primary focus because when you change that, it changes everything. So again, get some support in this. If there's something you want to face and work through and understand, this is how you do it. In my work with my clients, there's a lot of past integration, reparenting, healing memories. There's a lot of stuff that is around that because when you fix it, so to speak, when you resolve it, it changes everything from that point forward. And again, if you've got children or you're about to, you want to have children, if you've got carrying a pattern that came from your parents, it's a nice thing to tie the knot on it, to close it off, to complete it before you have the kids or before you raise the kids because you don't want them to carry that forward if it's something that doesn't work for you. Let me make sure I covered all the pieces I want to give. So let me, I'm going to put in, the, I'm in let me try that one in English. <laughs> it was like, that, that. <laughs> I highly recommend if you want to find out more, I'll put a link in the comments so you can have a chat with me. That's one of my gifts, I'll put in the link right away, um, as well as my books, I mentioned that as well. Because frankly, if this is something that is, tr is resonating for you or it's triggering for you or it's going, oh, I know this, I feel this, I don't know what it is, but I know it's upsetting me. Don't just sit there with it. Frankly, this is probably the best time to act if you're getting awareness, if this is going, light bombs are going off, or you're just going, oh my God, I realize this is my own experience. In the comments will be a link to have a conversation with me, a free complimentary chat. We can talk and see if there's a way I can help you. If it is, great. If there isn't, that's fine too. But I wanted to make sure you get this point because this is a game changer when you understand what you're doing to yourself in your relationships. And this stuff is true whether you're a man or woman, gay or straight, because it's all about what we learned as a kid. And all of us were children. Yeah, okay, to make sure I did say what I was going to say. So if you are weaponizing your history, this, watch this video, you'll explain, you'll understand what I mean by that and also how it works and also what to do about it. So I hope this made sense to you. This is part of my ongoing series of talks to awaken, to inspire, to frustrate some people and to educate. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook. Here's Facebook Live first, then it goes on YouTube. Um, so we find my replays in case you haven't seen me. Actually, if you want to see me live, if you're watching somewhere else, my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook, is where you watch me live at 5 p.m. Pacific time, every day of the week, seven days a week, which is why I'm now at episode seven, seven, eight, seven ninety, 790, whatever it was. I lost track. Um, <laughs> 793, I think. It's getting up there. Um, secondly, the replay is gone to my business page on Facebook and on my YouTube channel. So I'll give you both links. On my business page on Facebook, it's barryselby.author. Please like my page and you can watch them all there. However, I personally think that YouTube's easy to search through. So when you go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. There's a, a, a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. You can scroll through that list more easily because they're more, they're just laid out better on YouTube than they are on Facebook. So you can scan through there and look for titles that resonate. You can do a search for them and then watch the ones you want. Yet again, I've got over almost 800 broadcasts now. So that's a lot to look through. So having a title to search by or keywords you want to search by will help you a lot more. I hope it's been of value to you. I do invite your questions, thoughts, comments, etc. If you have any questions, please put them below. If you want to reach out to me over social media, you can do that. Again, I'll put some links in the comments when I sign off my book and a conversation with me because either way, that'll help your life. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me as always. I will see you again tomorrow if you join me live. I appreciate that. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.